Pods for you. Good morning, uh, dear brothers and sisters. I want to thank God so much for yet another opportunity he has given to each one of us to be on this platform. I want to uh, gladly say that it is not by mistake that you are on this platform this morning. And to those who will watch this, I also want to say that it is not by mistake that you are you click that button and decide to watch uh, this uh, recorded version of the Buddha devotion. I want to also thank uh, uh, the, the management for having allowed us to have this platform and to continue learning from God's word. And today we are still under our theme, after this manner, the love for pray. May I request you to humble ourselves once again for a short prayer. Dear Father, I pray that you will be our guide this morning once again. As we open your word, you also open our hearts to listen from you and to honor that which we will have heard, that we may be able to apply it into our lives. May this not be a knowledge that we are just piling up, but may, be, may it be something that will help us reach your kingdom and that your kingdom may be established in our lives. For this a humble prayer in Jesus' name, amen. The disciples of Jesus Christ, as I said, I am a sitting with Jesus and they decide to ask him for the second time, Father, God, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And it is after a realization that when Jesus is in prayer, something different happens to them. And they realize their need of praying in a sense that makes more meaning than they have ever prayed. We also have ever prayed. And today, we want to find more sense in the prayers that we make. Do they really have a lot of meaning? And Jesus echoes out no other prayer other than the one he had given them before. But this time around, they want to also find more meaning in that prayer. And it came to pass that as he, had, he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. My dear friends, this should be our petition. This should be our prayer today, that the Lord might teach us how to pray. And I want to say <clears throat> that Jesus came unto them and spoke to them. And one of the words that he taught them is, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. What does that mean? How is the will of God supposed to be done on earth? Oh, the question is first, how is the will of God done in heaven so that we can know how it should be done on earth? My dear friends, the will of God is expressed in the precept of his holy law. And the principles of this law are the principles of heaven. If you deal away with the holy law of God, you have dealt away with the principles of God and the will of God. In other words, you cannot perform the will of God at all by putting aside the law of God. It's impossible. If we need to put uh, in place, if we need to do the will of God, we need to first consider what his law says. So, how is it done in heaven? Well, the angels of heaven attain unto no higher knowledge than to know the will of God. The highest knowledge that the angels of heaven know is the will of God. It's what they know. And to do his will is the highest service that can engage their powers. Can you imagine? To do God's will is the highest service that engages the powers 
or the unfallen angels. And so it is to us that the highest thing we can do here on earth is to do the will of God, the highest of all that we can be engaged in. But in heaven, service is not rendered in the spirit of regus, legality. In heaven, this service of doing the will of God is not done in the spirit of regality or legalism. It is not about if I do this, God will also do this. That's legalism. When Satan rebelled against the, the law of Jehovah, the thought that there was a law came to the angels almost as awakening to something unthought of. The angels of God before were doing the will of God and it was just in them. They even didn't know there was a law. For them, they got to know that there was a law when Satan sinned. And that's when they got to know, oh, all along there has been a law. And to them, it was thought of. In their ministry, the angels are not as servants, but as sons. There is a perfect unity between them and their creator. Obedience is to them no drudgery. Uh, Love for God makes their service a joy. Now, this is how the will of God is done in heaven. First, in heaven, the angels are as sons. They are not as servants. And so we saw last time that we need to call our uh, God our father. And that makes us also sons and sons of God and brothers of Jesus Christ. The same happens to the angels that they are as sons of God. And the, them being sons, there is perfect unity between them and their creator. And God also calls us to have perfect unity between us and him if we are to be his sons. We become his sons if we do his commandments. That obedience to them is not drudgery. It is not something they are forced to do. They are dragged to do. But love for God makes their service a joy. That's why, my dear friends, the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. God wants us to do his will out of love. He wants us to do his commandments out of love, not out of legalism, not because we need to go to heaven, not because we need, someone actually say <clears throat> that if there was no heaven, they would still find a delight in doing God's will. Is it the same with you, my dear friend? That if there was no even that leeward at the end of the day, you still find joy in doing God's will. You still find joy in not drinking yourself out. You still find joy in going to the Sabbath and in six days working and on the seventh day rest. Wow. It is very joyful to do God's will. So, <clears throat> in every soul, where in Christ, Christ, the hope of glory drills, his words are yeah, his words are echoed. Which words are those? I delight to do thy will, O my God. He, thy law is within my heart. In every heart, where in Christ the, the drills, there is a willingness, there is there is a sense of thinking. There is a sense of wanting to do the will of God. And everyone defines everyone uh, who loves Jesus Christ finds delight in doing God's will because his law is within our hearts. My dear friends, this morning I want to encourage each one of us 
to find delight, to find joy, to find peace, to find happiness in doing God is done. The petition, thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven, is a prayer that the reign of evil on this earth may be ended. Amen? Is a prayer that the reign of evil on this earth may be ended, that sin may be forever destroyed, and the kingdom of righteousness may be established. Amen. We saw yesterday that thy kingdom come, and we are seeing that as we do God's will, we are bringing closer the kingdom of God. In fact, the kingdom of God is already reigning in us if we are doing his will. And so, by doing God's will, we are simply saying, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And this must start with us. The will of God being done on earth, it must first be done within our hearts. Then it can be extended to others also. And at the end of the day, the climax of the reign of the sovereign God would still be here on this earth. And we would enjoy, we will enjoy uh, the government of heaven once again while here on this earth. Then in earth, as in heaven, will be fulfilled all the good pleasures of his goodness. That's second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. My dear friends, we are reading from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page 109, paragraph 1 to 110, paragraph 1. And so that's how the uh, will of God must be done on earth as it is done in heaven. But Paul says these words, Romans chapter 7, verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. That's how we are. He is not speaking about only himself. He is defining every humankind that has ever existed after sin. For to will is present with me. I want to do that is which is good. But to perform that which is good, I find not. Is it how it is with you? That you want to do God's will. But at the end of the day, the power is not found within you. I want to give you an encouragement, my dear friends. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I want to tell you that if you are already willing, it is God who is working in you. And he is also willing to work in you, not only to will, but to do of his good pleasure. Then can we establish the fact that thy will be done in, on earth as it is done in heaven. I want to tell you, my dear friend, the power does not lie in you. The power lies in Jesus Christ whom we have accepted. And the Bible clearly tells us that he which has begun a good work in us and in you is faithful to even accomplish it up to the end. Is it your desire that you want to do God's will, that you want his power to reign in you, that his will might be done on earth as it is done in heaven? I want to invite you to pray with me. Let's pray. Kind and merciful Father in heaven, thank you so much that you have again taught us this morning. Thank you so much that you have allowed us to learn your, your ways. We pray, dear Lord, that as your will is done in heaven, it may also be done in earth, in earth. And it may be done in us in a special way that we may find delight in doing your commandments, that we may find delight in doing your will, that we may find joy in being partners together with heaven in everything that we do. May not 
may we not keep the law because we want to go to heaven, because there is a reward awaiting us. But may we do it because we love you and because we love the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that was for us. We pray that this day, as we begin this day, that you may help us do that which is within our reach to minister to the people around us and to also give glory to your name, to show that we have known you, the King of glory. Thank you so much for this day. May you bless each one of us. If there is anyone that is not doing well, well on this platform, I pray that you will touch them in a special way, that you meet them at the point of their need. If there is anyone who is not sure of what is going to happen today, what they are going to eat, what they are going to drink, I pray that you will still surely provide for such a one. <clears throat> I also pray for those who are listening, that you bless them, that the blessings we have shared may be equally shared together with them and much more as they listen to the recorded version of this. Be the guide today for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and have a good day. Tomorrow we're going to say uh, to see 